Ken and I met in 2014. Ken was a client and we hit it off. He came into the office, my boss kind of, hey, this is Ken, this is Courtney, and kind of went from there. You know, it was, uh, we definitely broke the HR rules with that one, but with my boss's permission, of course. Justin and I met, um, so I'm from North Carolina, he's from Iowa, um, and he was racing for JGR, Joe Gibbs Racing, um, out of, the only team based out of North Carolina. So um, we um, had mutual friends set us up on a group date and um, the rest was history. <laughs> yeah, it gets tough when they get bad results um, or have a bad race or a crash or I feel like I'm just now maybe learning how to deal with that better. When we first met, I was honestly very scared. <laughs> I was just like, oh my gosh, how do I? like juggle his feelings, my feelings, and like help the situation rather than like make it worse. Um, but I would say now I, um, I just try to give him his space and let him kind of cool down. And, but I also think it's good to just see the real and the raw of, of how he feels and how we deal with it, even our kids seeing that, because I feel like it teaches real life lessons. Paige plays a huge role in my life as a motocrosser from so many different aspects from obviously riding the highs and lows of, of racing. Um, and I would say that's the biggest thing she's helped with was before I met her, racing was my identity. I carried it if I, whether I won on the weekend or got 10th, I carried that. If I, if I had a good result, I had a good week. If I had a bad result, I had a bad week. And I hated living like that. I did not like that living Sunday through Friday where it was just on that result. So when you meet a person like like when I met Paige, it was, it was just an awesome life. I, I actually, after a bad result, I couldn't wait to get home because I knew it was still gonna be a really good week. And I think that's really important to, to have somebody like that, to find someone that can ride that with you. And, and also once you start having a family, I mean, it's just, it's amazing to, to have somebody like her uh, and to share the, the success and, and the failure. Like it's, it's so fun to, have her at some of the races and, and to be able to share that success that I've worked so hard for since I was really four years old. And I think she deserves that because once you meet, as a lot of people know, it's so much hard work and to be able to have some success is, is really, really fun and, and rewarding for the both of us. A bad result, a bad attitude, uh, Ken and I kind of have learned that it stops at the door. Um, the weekend stops Saturday night. You know, we try and recap the best we can and move on. You know, there's always a next race. There's always another result. You know, not every weekend's gonna go perfect. And I feel like we've become really good at managing the emotions of it and just rolling with it. You know, there's a lot of variables in the sport, whether it's health, injuries, um, bikes, uh, personnel. Um, there's so many that go into it that you can only control a tiny portion. And so we've kind of just learned, hey, it, when it's family time, it's family time. You do your job, I do my job. We come together at night and um, we don't dwell on it on, on very much. Courtney plays a huge role in my life. Um, I would say that I'm a bit of a handful, and I think she uh, she would probably agree. Everybody would probably agree. And I always said that you don't I don't need a ring on my finger to you know when I love somebody. But when I met her, it was just it was a no brainer for me. You know, um, never felt anything like it before, and, and I would do that decision over and over again. And now we've been together since uh, the end of uh, 2013. So. It's by far the longest relationship that I've ever been in and we got forever to go. I understand what it takes to be at the top of this sport. I've seen him be there and I've seen him, you know, be there for a long time now. And um, what he gives to it and what my role plays into it. And so the balance between, you know, he allows me to do the necessary things that he needs for his job and that's why like he steps in, he knows when it's he has to be dad time, when mom needs her free time. And 
um, it's almost like we have this unspoken language where we can, you know, you can see in each other's face, like, hey, I need, I need 10 minutes, or I, I really have to get through this to-do list, whether it's his or mine. Um, so yeah, I think we've, one, it's, we've learned how to read each other, and two, we've both grown up in this sport, so um, it's kind of second nature to us both. Yeah, Supercross, and yeah, when you used to do motocrosses, it honestly could, it will take up your whole year, and it, um, I think we've grown together in that, um, and how to juggle it. You know, when Justin is home, he helps with everything. He is one that wants to help with everything he can, and um, he does do that, and it's very helpful, but then we also find our rhythm, like when he is away so much, um, and the kids know by now, you know, as they get older, that he has to spend so much time training, and. Um, they know now, well the older two, uh, know now you know, why he has to spend so much time doing what he has to do and I, the older I get I respect that more because I know how hard he works and I see how hard he works to get, uh, to crush the goals that he's going for. Yeah, after a tough weekend it's obviously really nice to know that Paige is that one consistent and the biggest thing is, look she's not with me because of racing and that's the main thing is we're with each other because of the people that we are. And there's so many things behind that, right? With, and, and racing isn't one of them. Um, she could care less if I worked at a grocery store or wherever. And, and to be quite honest, if I told her uh, when we first met, it's like she just didn't care anything about racing. She had no clue about racing. Uh, funny story is when we first met, I, she would ask what I did and I would say I raced motorcycles. And, uh, for a couple months she would say, I, you've said you race motorcycles, but what do you do for work? <laughs> and I kept saying, well, I, I race motorcycles. She's like, I know you race motorcycles, but like that's a hobby, so like how do you make money or, or what do you do for work? <laughs> and her first race was Anaheim 1 and uh, really cool night. I was able to win the heat, the, the heat race that night and she quickly realized that, okay, this is a little bit bigger than in the fields of North Carolina racing locally. So. Uh, yeah, she could care less about it. And that's one of the things I love most about her is, uh, and it's how I know if, it, whether good result, bad result, I walk in the door, she's gonna love me no matter what. And that's a, it's a really, really good feeling. Yeah, having kids definitely, it was like when we first were dating, um, the systems we had in place were, you know, looked a lot different than when we started having kids. You know, we had things that worked for us and I obviously traveled a lot more with Justin to the races. Um, and then once we started having kids, we realized that was a whole nother ball game and <laughs> we had to put other systems in place. And I, when we just had Parker, she's eight now, but we did still travel a lot with her and um, included her in all of it. Um, but now having three, it, it's just a whole nother, <laughs> whole nother situation so we've learned to make smart decisions on like okay we're gonna stay at home a lot of the time and me and the kids stay in our routine and then Justin travel and do what he knows best in um, with racing and stuff. Yeah I wasn't nervous at all having kids while I was still racing it was part of the plan when Paige and I got married we knew we wanted to have kids right away and I wasn't nervous that it was gonna affect my racing and, and truthfully I, I think it's helped. It's, it's only helped. It's helped me detach from the racing side of it and just be a dad and a husband at home. Um, where before, once I decided I wanted to race Supercross, uh, after I graduated high school and started taking it serious, I was all in and it was a 24-7 thing. Um, it, it affected me all the time. I was constantly thinking about it. I could never detach from it. And once you, know, once you get married and you have kids, you have to detach, you don't have a choice because when I walk in the door, they don't care if I got first, last, had a good day at the track, bad day, good day in the gym, doesn't matter. And I would always look forward to that, to, to be a dad. And I've always wanted to have you know, several children and, and have always looked forward to being a dad. So, uh, and I think you know, years ago, it was a, the kind of a preconceived notion that if you had kids, your career was over. I think now it's totally changed. You look at the best guys, a lot of them have children and I think you see a lot of guys racing into their 30s now um, because of that I think they can detach from it and and have a normal life and I've always been all about that grew up you know with family and friends and playing different sports and big family so it's important to me and um, I wouldn't trade it for the world being able to share the success 
and just the work and everything to have my kids see that, especially my daughter, she's been, you know, she's eight. So she's got to experience a lot of it. And I will say my last season racing Supercross in America, riding my five-year-old son and my eight-year-old daughter out in opening ceremonies, there's no feeling like that. And to have a great career that I've had, to overachieve what I ever believed I, I could do, and to let them see a, a small part of that, is you can't replace that. And I think now that they've been able to see it, sky's the limit for them. I wasn't, I didn't grow up like that. I was always felt like I could never do that. I only got to see those guys on TV. They were cartoon characters to me. For my kids, it's real life, you know, and, and anything's possible. Just work hard at it and you can achieve it. Since Griffin has come into play, I feel like it's gotten better. You know, we can enjoy those moments a little bit. Um, it's not always work, work, work and like results, results. And, um, you know, coming off of Honda, like they welcomed it just as much. And so we have had um, so much fun with him joining and, you know, seeing Ken kind of change his outlook from him doing it for results and for himself. And now it's like, you do it for your kid and the legacy that, that he's, he's trying to leave behind for him. And um, it's a little bit less, I mean, stressful and not stressful. You know, you, the, the stress of the sport doesn't weigh as heavy anymore because you realize there's so much more to life once a kid is involved. You know, not many parents get to go racing 30 weekends out of the year and, you know, their husband races a dirt bike or their dad races dirt bike. Um, so it's really framed our outlook a lot different where this is something truly special that we get to do and to show him and do it together. I mean, just the person that Courtney is, like there was no doubt in my mind once we started having a conversation about having a child. She knew exactly what we were getting ourselves into because at this point our career isn't very long as motocross racers and um, it wasn't ever a question, you know, that it was going to take away from what we do because we have a short career and, and right now it is all about that. Like, you know, we, we want to set ourselves up for life and um, we were wanting to start having a kid and then once it happened, it happened a little bit by accident, but we were super happy about it because we were starting to, to really want to. So Courtney was taking a, a pregnancy test and we were all like, whoa, you know, she, she went in there and, and I said, I know what you're doing. Like in a weird way, I just knew that she was taking a pregnancy test and then she was pregnant and we were, we were kind of, you know, we got tears in our eyes and everything. We were a little bit scared as well. And, and um, Justin Brayton was one of the first people that um, that knew I was drilling him with question about racing career and uh, and having a child and and uh, you know he he was nothing but comforting and but it's funny because we were on a bike ride and I was asking him all these questions and he was like what's going on like there's something really fishy going on so I finally told him and he's like this it changed his life and made everything for the better and, and I would 1000% agree with that because um, at that point at my age right it was still I was still the young gun where it was all about racing and like super crazy, but once, once all that happened, um, it was never a question that this is for the better and I would never change a thing. Too many guys have retired at 27 because they want to have a family and start, you know, putting down some roots, but why can't we have our roots in racing doing what we love? Dealing with injury in Justin's sport is really tough and you hear all kinds of different opinions, you know, whether it's from social media or family and, you know, I guess to sum it up, if I look at it as, you know, Justin's doing what he loves and he has loved doing it since he was, I guess, three years old. Um, so if I'm all for it as long as he wants to race. I've always been all for it. It's always been his decision. Um, I don't want to make that decision for him because I see how much he loves it. And I also, you know, I have I lost my mom when I was 20 to a brain tumor, so I look at it that way too. Like, we're not promised tomorrow. We're not, you know, nobody's promised tomorrow. So why not do what you love and die happy? <laughs> Injuries are definitely no stranger to, to us, to Ken, to my brother. Um, in this sport, if you don't get injured, you're not going hard enough, you know? Like, I feel like every single rider has had his share of injuries. So dealing with all that, I feel like, what has worked for us is just 
everything's gonna happen for a reason. Like, I have to truly believe that, that, you know. Nope, I'm okay, I'm okay, I'm okay. I have to believe that everything happens for a reason because my family, between Ken and my brother, we've been hit with huge injuries. And um, if you don't believe that there's something good to come out of it, it'll eat you alive. And so I don't know if that's me just being hardened by all the injuries that, that we've faced, but I truly have to believe that miracles do happen. So through the injuries, I mean, whether it was my really bad arm injury or, or for anybody really, Courtney, she uh, obviously has been by my side every second of the way. And that, by that, I mean she showered me. It's about putting on shoes, tying my laces. And it wasn't just for a week or two, you know, it was a very, very long time. Like, I think we've gone through some amazingly tough times together, but it, it was never a question. And she was, she, she puts me in front of her, which, um, is an amazing feeling to have and uh, it's hard for me to even give that back right like I try but um, at least for now we, we focus so hard on our career um, but I feel like no matter what I do it's gonna be really tough for me to pay her back social media um, it's one of those things where it's a necessary evil and I've kind of learned to know that um, and I feel like I'm probably completely biased but I feel like Ken is held to a different critique because he does put himself out there on, so, on social media, whether it's um, like he's an open book, he, very, very transparent, how he's feeling, how like with his race results, the words that he says, I don't know if it's a European way of, of speaking um, uh, where he's just says it like it is. I feel like us Americans, we're like, it's good, it's good, it's good, even though, you know, we kind of like hold back emotions. In our sport, I think when Ken was young, he set the bar so high for himself with his results, his finishes, that now, because he's been on this long comeback and um, the ups and the downs, that he is very critiqued with everything that he does and social media only heightens everything. That, um, I've had to learn just to not respond on those bad ones. Um, there's a lot of bad ones. Everyone knows how to ride a dirt bike. They all have an opinion, um, how you should be doing things. They have your future totally mapped out for you in their mind. And, um, but really you just have to like stay the course. Like don't let, other voices, outside voices, um, kind of impede on your, your thought process and hopefully Ken will have left a, um, a, a positive impact. I feel like already he's, he's left a, a huge positive impact on the sport and um, so I'm, I'm not too worried about what is out there, what, what Griffin can read because in my mind he's an amazing human, he's done amazing things for this sport and I think the majority of people would say the same. I feel like it's not been hard for us to manage like the, our personal life versus social media and what's put on social media. But I feel like Justin and I are both maybe in the older era of, <laughs> of everybody else. So we kind of grew up with it not being everything about social media. So I feel like we just learn, I don't know, we just don't get into that that much. Um, we try not to look at all the comments and all the, cause we know it's there. We know that there's gonna be drama and there's gonna be rumors and all kinds of stuff, but our, how we deal with it is we just, we just try not to look there and try to just focus on what we can control and like the good and the good in the sport. At this level in the sport and being a woman, I would say that I have never had any, um, any troubles. I think because I, I don't wanna say paid my dues, but I've been in the sport for a long time, you know, and I've managed um, or helped manage incredible teams and incredible you know high dollar partnerships um, that most of the people who i'm still working with today i've known for 10 15 years you know like a lot of them know my history they know my family they know uh, where i've come from that um, i feel like i've always felt respected by people in the sport um, you know i know that there are a lot of 
I'll just call it blurred lines for women in our sport. So in the sport, it really depends, why, right? Girlfriends and, and wives, and especially when it comes to the team, like it's a little bit of a sensitive subject. The good thing is about Courtney that she has been in the sport for a long time, but as a, as a businesswoman. So she's been handling and, and, and working for the industry for, for a really long time. So I think she has a little bit of a special eye when it comes to that and the support. And I feel like from everybody around us, whether that's media people or, or teams and whatnot, she, she get, gets a lot of respect and um, she stays in her lane and you know where she's really good at too is um, when we were at HRC is having the headset and talking about really important stuff about racing and whatnot. She was the one that got all the conversations going and was talking directly to, to Jordan, my mechanic. And um, I think she's a little bit of a, of a special woman, at least in my eyes, and what I gather information from, from around the pits. So I think it just really depends what, what the ladies are, are there for in the sport, right? Luckily, my wife is, um, is respected, I would say, and, and she stays in her lane, but she's also very passionate about me and about the sport. So, but that's, that's exactly what I love about her, so I wouldn't change a thing. Women in the industry, I think, you know, coming up, you have great examples like Courtney Lloyd, who's, you know, one of the team managers of the um, Club of X World Supercross team. Um, you know, there's huge women leaders in our sport, you know, women who are behind the scenes running these huge corporations, these huge partnerships, and um, I feel like a lot of it comes down to women who want to do that job, women who see the value of, um, you know, bringing their intellect into these um, leadership roles within our industry. Um, you know, I, I look at women from other sports, um, you know, in, in F1 and MotoGP, and those are women who I hold truly valuable. Um, when I look at myself and the role that I play here in Supercross and Motocross, um, you know, those are women who I look up to. And so I think it just depends on the type of woman who wants to have that role. It's available to her. Like I've, I would have no doubt that I would be, if I would have stayed with the agency, that I would have my own athletes, that I would be running huge accounts, if not, um, you know, working at one of the corporate um, or being a part of a corporate leader within our sport, whether it was, you know, Honda discount tire, because that was something that I thrived on. And um, so I think that women are capable. And because of my experience, men will listen. They will latch on to your ideas. It's not just a boys club. It is if you don't put yourself in the game. My advice to the women in our sport, and it has nothing to even do with the racers, would be to always have something for your own. Um, your own, like our husbands are, and as my dad would say, we're one crash away from being a plumber, which, you know, you have to have a backup. Never follow a boy. What I would say to, I guess, women or girlfriends, wives coming into the industry, you know, you're younger, you're going into it instead of going out. I guess the, the biggest thing I've learned is to really like take each year in, like, because I look back at the beginning of our career and it's like, it can be nerve wracking and this sport is nerve wracking. And even though I'm gonna say this, it's not gonna make it easier, but you know, those first years you're always like, oh, like, I hope I get the contract for next year. I hope I get, you know, and I feel like you get more comfortable with that as you go on. Um, but I guess my advice would be to try to enjoy those early years too, because there's always a plan. And if it's not racing, then the world's not gonna end, so. Yeah, having three kids at home, the number one thing is a great support system, which is Paige, my wife. I mean, if if it wasn't for her, none of it's possible. Even one kid while racing and, you know, you're gone a lot, you're training a lot, you're on the road. Um, your life revolves a lot around racing. So yeah, but the biggest thing is a, a support system, having Paige at home. She's an amazing mother. Um, and just a, a huge part of, of all of this. And I would have been done a long time ago uh, if, you know, if it wasn't that way. And um, I'm glad it's the way it is. And I knew really the first day I met her that she would be that way. And, and um, it's amazing to find somebody like that and, 
and to be able to still do what I love for this long. I mean, I'm almost 39 years old and to think we're still at it and still competitive and uh, still racing with some of the best guys in the world, it's cool and, and you know, none of it's possible without her. I was in nursing school and I was getting my nurse, like I'm a nurse, and we, I worked as long as I could, even, I think I was pregnant with our second, I was working as a nurse, but then when we started traveling to Australia, I couldn't keep up my position, like in the state, so that's honestly the only reason why, like why I quit, but I guess it's like huge for the women to always have their thing to, to define themselves and not get lost in the, you know, like you're just a racer's wife, like you always need your own thing to like, keep going and then obviously the ki three kids keep me really busy now. <laughs> I guess like my takeaway from all of it when, I, when I'm able to like sit back and look at what we've done and where we are and what we had to do to get here is um, man I love it. I love what we've been able to accomplish and um, together and you know the highs the lows it's given us so much in learning and um, grit and um, you really truly know what you're made of when you're faced with stuff like what we've been thrown at and um, same with a lot of the other families like you truly learn how resilient you are. Changing your first nappy. First what? Nappy. What's, what's a nappy? Diaper. Diaper? I kind of what a nappy is.